Hey, fourth graders, welcome back to day two. Yesterday we looked at comparing fractions, and today we're going to be looking at fractions on a number line. So if I show this top part right here a second, yesterday, this should, this should be something that you should recognize from yesterday, where I have a rectangle that represents one whole, and I broke my rec rectangle up into four equal parts, uh, and I represented that as one-fourth, 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 and one-fourth. But we can also do this on a number line. Okay, so if I move this up a little bit here, I have a number line. And you should notice that my number line looks just like my bar model above it, except now I have lines instead of a bar. And I also have fractions written in there um, to represent where they would stand on the number line. So starting all the way over here, this is zero or zero fourths. And if we move over about one fourth of the line, we have one fourth. We move over about half of the line, or just another um, one fourth increment we have two-fourths, or which is about one-half of the whole line. Okay, if we move over another fourth, I have a dot with an A there. We'll find out about that in just a second. If I move over another fourth, we've reached one, because I have one whole represented here, which also equals four-fourths. Okay, now if I go back to this A right here, I want you guys to try to figure out what this A would represent. If we look at our pattern here, we have zero-fourths, one-fourth, two-fourths, something, and four-fourths. Try to figure out what that A would represent. Okay, hopefully you had time to figure out what A would represent. Point A represents three-fourths. So we just continue on with that pattern of zero-fourths, one-fourths, two-fourths, three-fourths, and four-fourths. All right, moving on now to another number line here. Notice my number line here is a little different than the first one. My first one only went up to one. This one goes up to two. Okay, now it's starting over here. I have zero over two, which again represents zero. I have a missing number here in the middle. Then uh, to my next biggest mark, I have 2 over 2, which also equals 1. 3 over 2, which also equals 1 and 1 half. Or 4 over 2, which also equals 2. I want you guys to try to figure out, using a pattern, because this is all focusing on patterns here, what is point A equal? Think for a second. Think about the pattern. Okay, If I have 0 over 2, missing number, 2 over 2, 3 over 2, and 4 over 2, Basically, I'm just counting to four here. One, zero, one, two, three, and four, which would mean that this right over here would be one over two. Moving on to my next number line that I have down here. This is also equal, or this number line also goes up to two, but it is broken down not in halves or twos, but it's broken up into thirds. Okay, so starting over here on this side again, I have zero over three, moving over to one over three. 2 over 3, 3 over 3, 4 over 3, missing number, and then 6 over 3. Okay, just like the first one, try to figure out what point B is going to equal if we go with our pattern here. Okay, think for a second. Okay, hopefully you did get 5 over 3 by just continuing that pattern from 0 thirds, 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, and this would be 5 thirds, and 6 thirds. Now notice down here on my number line, I also have the equivalent written as a mixed fraction. Okay, so 4 over thirds also equals one, th one and 1 third. All right, another really cool thing about number lines is you can use them to compare fractions. Okay, and I know that we were comparing fractions with same numerators yesterday and same denominators. Today I'm going to show you a way that you can compare fractions where the numerators aren't the same and the denominators are not the same, just by using a number line. Okay, so I have two number lines here, and I know that there's a lot written on this whiteboard, but bear with me here for a second. Okay, so my number line, now notice it starts at 4. It doesn't start at 0. This number line starts at 4, and this number line starts at 4. Both of them go from 4 to 5 to 6, and both of them are broken up differently. The one up here is broken up into fourths. I know that it's broken up into fourths because of the denominator is a 4. Okay, I mean, because the denominator tells me how many total parts there are. So down here, I know that it's broken up into fifths. Okay, if I want to compare two different fractions, I can just look at the two number lines um, when they're right up next to each other, when they're compared right up next to each other. Okay, so if I have 19 fourths, which is right over here, and if I have 21 fifths, which is all the way over here, I know that 19 fourths is greater than 21 fifths because 19 fourths is further down the number line than 21 fifths. Okay, and similarly, if I have 29 fifths and 21 fourths, I know that 29 fifths 
is greater than 21 fourths because it is further down the number line here. 29 fifths is all the way down here with the red, and 21 fourths is all the way up here, which is further back, closer to four, than it, or closer, excuse me, closer to five than it is to six. And 29 fifths is closer to six than it is to five. So I would also say that 21 fourths is less than 29 fifths. All right, now I'm going to show you guys this number line. Now notice this number line goes from zero to one, just like some of our other number lines have. But this time I don't have any labels on this number line. We're going to figure out how we need how we can label a number line. Okay, so if I start at zero and I'm going to one, I know that there's going to be no other numbers less than zero or greater than one. Okay, that's a good start. The other thing that I need to do is figure out how many equal parts there are between zero and one, broken up by my dash marks here. Okay, how many equal parts are there? I'm going to pause the video a second. I want you guys to try to figure out how many equal parts there are on my top number line here. All right, hopefully you had a chance to find how many equal parts there were on my number line. So I went through here and I marked how many equal parts I found. So I found five equal parts. Now notice I didn't just count the dash marks, so I would have gotten four. I counted the space in between the dash marks and I got five equal, um, equal parts. Okay, I also took the liberty to now label what um, each of these dash marks are with fractions now that I know how many equal parts there are. Now notice I found five equal parts, which means I have my denominator for every single one of these is going to equal a five. I just go from zero to one fifth to two fifths, three fifths, four fifths. This would also be five fifths, but we also know that five fifths equals one. All right, I want to give you guys a chance here to figure out how many equal parts there are for this number line. Now notice it's a little different than the top one. They still go from it still goes from zero to one, but it's broken up a little differently. First, figure out how many equal parts there are, just like up here. I want you to do it down here. And then after you figure out how many equal parts there are, I want you to try to figure out what each one of these little dash marks would represent. So I'll give you guys a second to do that now. All right, hopefully by now you've had a chance to go through and find out how many equal parts there were, and then also to label our number line here. So first I went through and I found out that there were eight equal parts, eight equal sections in between each of my hash marks. That tells me that my denominator is going to be eight. Okay, so my denominator, at least for my most basic fractions, are going to be eight. Okay, now notice I went from one-eighth, two-eighths, three-eighths, all the way up to seven-eighths. But notice I also added a couple other fractions up here. I added one-fourth, one-half, and three-fourths. Now my one-fourth is also the same thing as two-eighths. So just because you have two-eighths, you also need to understand that two-eighths is the same thing as one-fourth. Now we're going to be talking about that more in a later lesson. So if that still doesn't make sense quite yet, that's okay. But also one-half or excuse me, one half is also the same thing as four-eighths. And three-fourths is the same thing as six-eighths. All right, that will conclude our lesson today. I know that my homework has already been posted for you in our homework doc. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'm very much happy to help. And good luck, guys, and I miss you guys a lot, and I hope that you guys are doing good. Hey, wash your hands.